Hey guys, Mike here. So, you know, this is going to be a jam-packed video uh, with a lot of information for you and really pertaining to what do we got coming up this week, right? We just came out of a huge week with the mecha cap earnings. The stocks were roaring, right? This week's going to be all about the economic data rolling out, not only here in the United States, but globally to see where we stand on that, the macro data, as we like to say, and understand. We're going to look at the charts to see, you know, this is a big week. We're going to get to see if this rally really has legs or not, depending on how it absorbs that data, but also on the charts, you'll see there's just going to be a lot of resistance and everything and coming up. And so we'll see if we can push through or we're finally going to do a pullback, which we're well deserved on, by the way, because it's everything. Stocks have just been moving so fast right now. And I'm going to show you a chart that sometimes you just look at it and you're like, is it that simple? Like I ran across this chart and I'm going to show it to you. I made it up and I actually just went ahead and went into trade view and did it for you. But I saw it somewhere else and I was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, it's one of those charts you wish you would have saw before. I wish I would have found before. Um, but it's just amazing to look at it. Uh, and then some other things you need to pay attention to very closely. One, while there's not going to be an official recession analysis, you can almost guarantee it. And two, a lot of stuff, a da a data that is, that has to start trending down. It can't possibly keep going higher. At least we keep telling ourselves that every month because it affects you and me and every other American out there, right, in a negative way. And so we'll take a look at that as well. But first, we'll start off uh, with the S&P uh, 500 chart and show you exactly what we're up against here this week. And you can see on the S&P, obviously, is right up against the 100-day moving average. Already came up, bounced off the 50-day, retested it. But also, I'll tell you right now, it is a bunch of gaps that it left behind over the last few weeks because it kept gapping up and so we'll get to see if we'll fill those or not but the big question is can it capture the 100 moving average big resistance line above that ton of volumes you can see down at the bottom then you got the nasdaq 100 actually broke out of its ascending channel which i've been talking about it's got a gap above it it can feel and so also though on the way up what it ended up doing end up gapping up as well and so on the hourly there's gaps down below about 90 percent of gaps actually feel uh, but no matter what came out in the market it didn't care right i mean stocks absolutely have just been on a tear right now uh, heading up like a rocket ship and sometimes you come across a chart and you think to yourself is it really this simple and this is the qqq monthly chart it's a logarithmic scale and look at this right here this trend line right this is where we bounced right here the first week of june but if you scroll back on this chart, what's so amazing to me is that's exactly where we bounced in 2020. It's where we bounced in 2018, as you can see. And it goes all the way back to 08, though. If we scroll all the way back, you'll see right here, that's where we bounced on in 08, right? And began to February on this chart. And sometimes it's like, that's just amazing to me that, you know, obviously after the fact, I wish I would discovered this chart before, but... You know, sometimes I guess it is that simple. And I just got to tell myself, I got to look at these lo uh, logarithmic charts to smooth it out a little more, uh, more often is what I got to do, basically. And by the way, if you get anything out of this, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. I really appreciate it. Think about sharing the video as always, guys. Thank you for all your support. And so, yeah, that chart just amazed me, right? It, it really is almost like the same thing when I did that members video on June 16th about the NASDAQ 100 possibly bottoming. And you look at it and it's like, yeah, history doesn't repeat, but it sure rhymes a lot. And you, you saw that if you got to see that video or see the video I did last week about it. And sometimes it is that simple. You know, when people try to tell you, you know, that these that stocks don't trade off charts, it's ridiculous because they're talking about in the 80s and 90s, right? But now remember, 94% of trading, trading is done by computers, algorithms, and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, for whatever reason, you know, the, <laughs> these trend lines, people draw these Fibonacci levels, they aren't fake. I mean, it just happens, right? And so it's weird, I know. And so, you know, a couple of things that to watch out for this week, especially is, you know, one of those things people tell you is you got to be careful buying stocks when the VIX is low versus when the VIX is way up high, right? Because that's what usually when you get your biggest returns. I've showed you on the charts many times. And right now you see, we're going to get the VIX and what the dollar is doing. Because those are two big things we got to watch this week. And you can see the VIX is right there. That trend line is bounced off of one, two, three. And so this could be the fourth time. Or does it finally break through 
uh, that support line and trend line right there and start finally dropping down into levels we hadn't seen since the beginning of the year. All right, and that's why, and this year a lot of people have used this to actually make their purchases when the VIX is really high and then sell when it gets really low. I mean, that's just kind of how, been, how this year has gone so far. And it's been a pretty good strategy, I mean, for them as well. But the other one's gonna be the dollar. And you can see the dollar here, another trend line has bounced off of multiple times. And you can see every time it's coming down, boom, bounces right there. It's the third time, fourth time, and now where's it heading? It's heading right back down. So a lot of people are betting against it, say it's gonna go ahead and continue to decrease, right? But a lot of people are just waiting to kind of see, do we break through that trend line or are we going to start moving up? And so that's something we're going to have to see right there. Now, as far as the official recession, here's what, you know, MBR, or MBER, excuse me, which we talked about the other day. These are the six variables used by NBER to make its recession determination. And so since December 21st of this year, all of the things they look for, whether it's real personal income, less transfer, non-farm non payroll employment, household survey employment, industrial production, real household, plus retail sales, and then real consumer spending are all up this year. And so that is going to be hard to sit there and say, yep, we're in a recession if all of these are continuing to increase, right? And I know what you're thinking. You're like, that, that looks great, but, you know, what about all the negative uh, factors out there? And that's true. And that's why I say there's... For the first time, you got just all these different conflicting data points, right? Or all these data sources are coming out saying, well, this is good. Yeah, this is negative. Look at this over here, you know, and then this affects this and this affects that. And so it's almost impossible to tell, right? And so, you know, but this is what they go off of. So if you looked at that and you were part of that group, would you say we're in a, a real recession or just a technical recession? You know, and I got to go with them and say, it looks like a technical recession to me because I'm listening to so many different earnings calls and, and the consumer, however they're spending, whether it's cash, credit card, we're spending, we're spending. So again, that can stop really fast, right, on a dime. And so it's gonna be interesting to see with school starting back now, obviously people get back to real life, vacations are over, all this good stuff. And so, uh, you know, whether that continues or not, uh, we'll have to see, because now guess what a lot of people are gonna be paying for? child care a lot of money goes towards child care okay so people can work so that's gonna be interesting where the money starts to flow uh, again and do people still continue uh, the discretionary spending right the things we don't need that's what we're gonna have to find out all right and you know but these things right here a couple things i'm going to show you it has to flatten out or stop i mean i can't believe I mean, honestly i'm shocked that these are still going up because we've just never seen anything like this before. And the first one is the rents, right? I told you before, you know, if this was a stock, man, you'd be loving life because the trend is great going up, right? And it just continues. This affects about 35 to 40% of the country. And so look at that. I mean, it just continues to go up month after month. Even we keep saying, nope, it's going to come down. It's going to come down or at least flatten out, but it keeps continuing to go up. And then there's your power bills. Look at this. That looks like a meme chart to me right there, starting in 2020. I thought this was GameStop or something when I saw this. Look at that. That is insane. That's the electricity bills, uh, the average U.S. Uh, city electricity bills right there. I mean, it just continues to go up. You see no room uh, that is stopping, gonna you know, uh, end up decreasing or anything like that. And then you can see the savings rate. I mean, these are you know, one of the most important things. I mean, it continues to decline. It's 5.1 right now. But, you know, I expect that, right? And you think 5 point sounds good, and then you go back and you're like, well, actually, we have to go back to 2009 to see that kind of savings rate, but it makes total sense that it keeps declining because guess what? People got to sit there and keep paying more for groceries and utilities and rent, as I just showed you, and mortgages and cars. And so, of course, their saving rates are going down because more of it's going towards this other stuff, which they got to pay more for. So it makes sense. I'm surprised it's not worse, to be honest with you. And so, you know, and that leads us into this week. And I'll tell you, economic data is huge this week, right? We're going to have the U.S. manufacturing PMI on Monday, ISM manufacturing, construction spending. Tuesday is going to end up going into jobs, rental household debt, uh, homeowners vacancy rate. I don't care about the Fed speaking. Bullard can't even vote, by the way. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to go into ISM services index, factory orders, core capital equipment orders. Those are going to be huge. See how the economy is doing. Or are we still slowing, right? Trade deficits on Thursday. Uh, Friday is the big one. Non-farm payrolls. They look at hard unemployment rate. Did it go up? Did it stay the same? Average hourly earnings. Is it going up, down? Where are we at on that? Because that's stuff the Fed will be looking at really, really hard. If we're staying at 3.6%, right, and we're still producing all these jobs, 
Uh, then guess what inflation is going to keep doing? It's going to stay way up here. That's just the way because the demand will stay high, right? And they've already told us they need to get demand down. One of the craziest predictions I saw last week, I think it was Thursday or Friday, came out. And this person said that we'll be at 2% inflation in six months. And I thought, we're at nine now, and we're going to be at 2% inflation in six months. So January, everything's good, right? I mean, that is one of the craziest predictions I've heard. And understand, I hope he's right, because if he is, life's good. That means we're putting more money in our investment accounts and, and everything else versus putting it in our gas tanks and in the grocery bill and in the mortgages and rents. That's fantastic. You know, I, I think that's great. The odds of that happening, please put in the comments what you think, that we're going to be at 2% inflation in six months. Like, I, I find that extremely hard to believe. I will be stunned in six months by the beginning of 2023 if we're even below, I don't know, 5%, to be honest with you. I'll be, I'll be shocked. But 2%? Hey, maybe he knows something, you know. But, again, this person has also been saying we're – going to be going up in the market since January. So I don't know I don't feel, know where they're getting their data from. But still, I hope he's right. I just find that really hard to believe. We're going from 9 to 2% in six months. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, that means a lot of stuff's going to have to drop really fast. So anyway, uh, it's going to be a good week. i got another good video coming out tomorrow, um, which I think you'll really like. I know I enjoy doing it. So Hope you guys have a good rest of your Sunday, and I will see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you later.